Affairs and Agencies Committee meeting to order. First up, we have approval of the agenda. Motion and support. Uh, please note that Adam is making an addition to the agenda. It'll be right after item G, which is the equalization report. He's going to slip in what's called the Conservation District Report. She was supposed to have been on the agenda last month. We bumped her to this month, and she's trying to arrange with Delane to get it. So it'll bump everything down. So with that uh, change to the agenda, all those and any others? Hearing no others, all those in favor of signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same. Motion carried. First up, we have public comments. Public, you have five minutes to address the board. Please step to the mic and give us your name. Good morning. My name is Stephen Reiser. I live on the corner of Franklin and Wisner here in the city of Jackson. And I just wanted to come and introduce myself and let you know that, yes, I applied and put my name in for a position on the board of the Region 2 Area Agency on Aging. And just wanted to give you a little bit of a quick overview why I decided to do that. Uh, first of all, a, a member of the board from actually Hillsdale County had said to me, hey, I know you're looking to get involved. You should take a look at this. So I researched it like I do everything in life. And I talked about it and I thought about it and I decided to go ahead and apply and the reason I really decided it was something I wanted to do is uh, I thought about two people in my life my 91 year old grandmother and my fiance 75 year old grandmother both of whom are senior citizens by definition but who have totally different needs my 91 year old grandmother she has a flip phone that she really can't figure out how to turn it on and we try to explain grandma it comes on when you open it my 75 year my fiance seven my fiance is not 75 my fiance 75 year old grandmother she's got an iPhone she's sending me messages through the messenger app through Facebook and I just think these are two people with really totally different needs though they're both senior citizens and I thought maybe it's a little odd at 30 years old to desire to want to serve on this board uh, but in my hometown prior to moving to Jackson, I served on a school board where it was a great opportunity to serve those who would be coming after me out of the school system. And I really thought this was a good fit uh, to serve those people who came before me. Uh, I serve currently as Congressman Tim Wahlberg's district director uh, running his office here in Jackson. And I know all too well that there are a lot of veterans, for example, who don't know all of the services and opportunities available to them and I see that the same for senior citizens there are lots of programs out there that senior citizens may not necessarily be fully aware of and anything I can do to help those individuals uh, I, I would love to do that and that's why I seek an appointment to that board thank you any other public comment anyone else seeking an appointment now would be time to speak no other public comment. Thank you. Moving on to minutes from the March 7th meeting. Be looking for a motion. Motion and support. Changes or corrections? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same. Motion carried. Next up is appointments. A note that the first set of appointments is the Department on Aging Advisory Council. Uh, by the way, it appears to me we have three seats with current, or two with current members, one vacant, but no applicants yet. So I'm guessing that will continue to advertise, Mike. Mike says yes. Uh, traffic safety program, same situation. We have two uh, designated seats. We don't have a name for either one yet. I have talked with one city council member and let him know that uh, the recommendation comes from them to us. He's going to work on that, which takes us to the Region 2 Area Agency on Aging. And we have three public member seats all expiring in April of 18. The three current members are Howard Griffiths, Patricia Spink, and Arlene Shepard. And the applicants are those three, plus Stephen Razier, Becky Pletzer, and Mike Butchert. 
and we'll fill them one at a time with nominations from the floor. So if someone has a nomination, Julie. For the first slot, I'd like to nominate Howard Griffiths, please. Okay. Any other nominations on the first seat? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same. Motion carried. Second seat, we'd be taking nominations for that. Julie. I'd like to nominate Patricia Spink. Okay, nomination for Patricia Spink. Any other nominations for that seat? I would nominate Arlene Shepard for that seat. Any other nominations? Clerk will call the roll. Yes, Mr. Chair. Commissioner Leitner. Commissioner Walls. Commissioner Alexander. Spink. Commissioner Plachek. Spink. Chairman Owl. Shepard. Okay, four Spink, one Shepard. Spink has re received the required votes. We'll move on to the last uh, seat and be looking for nominations. I'd like to nominate Stephen Reiser. <coughs> Any other nominations for the third seat? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same. Stephen Reiser's name will be forwarded to the board along with Patricia Spink and Howard Griffiths. Thank you. Next up is the Enterprise Group of the BRA and EDC semi annual reports. Good morning, Amy. Good morning. Um, First, for the Brownfield Redevelopment Authority, we submitted a report in writing, but there are a couple of highlights that if you haven't had a chance to read it, I want to bring to your attention. You can see that once we have a grant, which the county received last year, $400,000 EPA assessment grant, we become much busier because we have funding that we are able to assist projects with. Um, I think one of the highlights is the old Irish Mill, the former Ford plant in Brooklyn, 221 Mill Street, that's being developed by Dan Ross that owns um, Transfarm preclinical solutions in Napoleon and that's moving along um, the Brownfield Authority in fact just last week it's reported on their um, at their April 7th meeting approved some additional funding for an amendment of the Brownfield plan and uh, preparation of a work plan we've met with MEDC representatives it looks like there's going to be some state incentives incentives probably um, block grant to move that project along so it's quite exciting and Dan did attend the meeting um, also, Crown Industrial, you'll see them on both reports. Um, they bought the former Midbrook, Midbrook Products building, and they have received um, a 200000 EDC revolving loan in, um, to assist them with some of their due care compliance in renovating that building as far as the env environmental concerns. Um, also, um, I won't go over every single thing, but the Brownfield Authority um, per our EPA assessment grant is charged with involving the community, and it's al always been kind of a, a challenge to make sure that we reach the community and do the best we can at informing them about Brownfield activity. So we've adopted, or we're in the process of adopting our new policies and procedures that includes a community engagement portion that's kind of new and our consultants are meeting with our collaborative partners over the next few weeks and they met last Thursday with Jackson Area Manufacturers Association, um, Community Foundation and Baker College and these partners are all partners that always write letters of support when we apply for these EPA grants and what we're doing is trying to find um, ways in which Brownfield um, grant recipients can participate in improvements to the community close to where their brownfield projects are. So we're kind of in the early stages of that, but we've had some really good um, partner support meetings and meeting those um, goals. And I guess with that, I would ask if there are any questions on the brownfield report. Commissioners, any questions? Thank you for that one, Amy. And next you have? Next is the EDC, EDC Revolving Loan Fund. And again, um, we, we usually come to you and tell you that we have funds available. We're trying to get them out, and we were able to um, issue a $200,000 loan to Crown Industrial, as I mentioned, in the Brownfield. And that will be used for renovations to the building and also to do their due care compliance. 
Um, you can see that we have had 44 loans in the portfolio, totaling um, over $4.4 million. It's uh, leveraged $50.1 million and resulted in 920 jobs being retained and 541 new jobs. This is since the inception of the program. Um, I guess those are the highlights, and I would answer any questions if you have them. Amy, just one curiosity question for me. You've got noted a Chapter 11 for Cox Machine. Yes. And that's the city portion of the revolving loan fund. Ballpark, do you know what that's going to amount to if it impacts us? We don't know what the impact because it's going through the court proceedings now. Chapter 11 is a reorganization, so we really have not been advised what the impact might be. you know what the total amount of the loan was or not? Um, that was a $200,000 loan. Commissioners, any other questions? Thanks, Amy. You're welcome. Thank you. Next up, we have the Region 9 Michigan Works, formerly South Central Michigan Works, and Jim Cotu. Morning. Good morning. It's not cooperating. That's okay. He's telling me your video feed's not working anyway, so I'll just go through it. You do have a copy of it? Okay, great. Great. So I'm Jim Cuccio. I'm the business services manager for uh, what is now known as Region 9 Michigan Works. That name is changing because we're going through regionalization, which is going to include Jackson, Hillsdale, Lenaway, uh, Ann Arbor, uh, Washtenaw, and uh, Livingston counties. Um, this is our first of our biannual reports this year uh, covering the last portion of last year. Um, currently the unemployment rate in Jackson County is 4.5%. Um, that's up about a half a percent from the end of 2015. Uh, the state average is actually 4.8% at that time and we've been trending downward uh, since about 2009 where it was 13.8%. Um, currently to now up for about 4.5% this morning. Um, the non-farm payroll employments for Jackson County is edged down over 200 um, through the month of, of the end of December there, about 56,500 jobs. Um, there are some cuts in education, health care, government, and trade, transportation, warehousing, and utilities have all edged up. Uh, so locally, I changed our presentation up a little bit because I want to give you a little more information about what we're doing locally. Um, through March of 2016, our fiscal year goes from July to June each year. So from March or from July of 2015 to March of 2016, uh, we filled 817 jobs. That number is always going to be low because not everybody really reports back on a, on a consistent basis. Um, we served 13,569 uh, individuals, and for that year, for the time frame for the year, 43,000 people have came into our center. Um, we've served 847 employers, and we've allocated uh, $77,000 uh, towards on-the-job training, which, train, which helps companies hire and train new employees, uh, and actually helps them retain them also. Um, the state in 2013 came out with what's called the Skilled Trades Training Fund, and that is a uh, program that helps companies um, helps companies with competitive awards, um, basically to help them train their current employees. 
Uh, it also helps um, increase productivity and employee retention. Um, in our county, we have been awarded applications of uh, $535,000. Uh, in the region, $1.7 million. This is all money that goes directly to companies to help them train their workers in skilled jobs that usually result in a credential. Um, so it's helping them keep their companies uh, viable and helping their keep their current workforce up to date. So, any questions on any of that? Yes, ma'am. So when you look at the Jackson County numbers, how do we compare to the other counties within Region 9? Uh, unemployment, is that what you're speaking of? Um, I'm looking at this, the, that last slide, I'm sorry. Okay, the, in, in regard to right, the dollars um, used to train individuals in our county. Uh, it, for Jackson County, we look pretty, we look, we're pretty competitive. Um, okay. $739,000 for all three counties, Hillsdale, Illinois, and Jackson, because that's where we cover. So I have people working in each county to help those companies in that county. Um, the standard really for the, for the regions are usually anywhere between $1 and $2 million average. Okay. Um, I would love to get a $1 million for our county every time, but it's first come, first serve. It's based on... Um, what types of training they're going to do, how many apprentices they're putting into these. So it's really based on a scoring criteria that are really out of our hands. You know, we help them um, utilize any funds that are, are that are also around, like MNJTP funds through Jackson College. To, you know, so we are using braided funding to help them increase the chances of getting their application uh, approved through the state. But it's really a, kind of a first come first serve based on what they submit and what their needs are. So not everybody gets approved. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions of Jim? Thank you. All right, thank you. Next up, we have the sheriff with the code red mass notification system, something we all saw at study session. Good morning. Good morning, commissioners. So before you, I have a request for to move forward with the purchase of the Code Red Mass Notification System. Um, I talked about that at the study session. Uh, I'll go over it a little bit for the uh, those that didn't have the luxury of um, seeing the presentation. Uh, we've been researching a mass notification system for about 18 months, something to augment or to bolster the outdoor weather warning sirens, but also something that could be used in a platform to notify residents of this county in a variety of situ situations, not just inclement weather. Uh, we settled upon Code Red for a number of reasons, both the high degree of effectiveness that the system has, the fact that they maintain control over their own servers, they have a higher success rate of callbacks than any other, uh, any other company, and further, uh, most of the partners in our Homeland Security region, Region 1, here in Central Lower Michigan, are already using this product. It's been tested, it's been vetted, uh, we know that it works. Um, this is a Homeland Security purchase out of Homeland Security dollars. There is no county match. There is no county requirement. It is completely funded and covered by Homeland Security grant. Uh, however, it does require the local governing board's approval. Uh, so there's been a number of demonstrations on this. Um, it is very effective in the amount of callbacks that they can issue uh, for a life safety emergency. Um, they have the ability to tailor their callbacks or their dialogues, as they call it, to our local phone infrastructure so it doesn't overload the infrastructure that we have here in the county, thus giving complete busy signals for those who may be trying to contact 911. Um, they can throttle their system down or up. It also includes, obviously, cell phones. They have a very robust PR campaign as they roll this product out to uh, get subscribers to voluntarily um, sign up for this service, either with an uh, app uh, in the Apple Store or Android platform. Uh, they have all those apps available and that gets the notifications out um, a lot more effectively but also they have a lot of research and a lot of data mining they do to get phone numbers um, for these emergency callbacks. Uh, a question came up at the study session. We do not house any of these phone numbers nor are these phone numbers sold, resold, or anything of that nature. It is strictly for life safety emergencies that this company uses this product for. Um, again, you know, I talked a little bit about outdoor weather warning sirens. Certainly this is one of the situations as we kind of roll up on uh, severe weather week here uh, that probably we would most likely see. Uh, we know that outdoor weather warning sirens are for just that outdoor weather warning. Uh, they're not very efficient at penetrating structures, um, nor are they very efficient over a wide range of area. Uh, so this can augment those sirens in the um, 
situation of inclement weather, but also you have situations like I talked about at the study session with Kalamazoo uh, just recently uh, where they had an active shooter or a gunman moving across the city. Um, that would have been a very ideal situation to use this mass notification product for. Um, and again, this mass notification product comes with specific instructions that we want to uh, render to the citizens. For instance, if it's a chemical release, we want you to evacuate your area. Or if it's an active shooter, we want you to shelter in place or um, remove yourself from a public venue. Um, there's all these specific instructions, short, very concise, that we can give the citizens. It is a very effective tool. Uh, so we would look for your approval to move forward with this purchase. Thank you, Undersheriff. Any other questions of the Undersheriff? Mike, it's thirty thousand dollars, but it's passed through. Does it get approved here, or does it go to the full board? It is grant funded, but it's thirty thousand dollars. Approved here. Okay. Be looking for a motion. Mike says approval here. Support. Motion and support. Questions or comments? Hearing none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same. Motion carried. Thanks, Under Chair. Thank you, Commissioners. Next up, we have the Register of Deeds 2015 Annual Report. Mona. Good morning, everyone. Is that better? Okay. Before we get to crunching numbers, I just wanted to say a little bit about the Register of Deeds Office in general. Besides the clerk register myself, we have three full-time clerks in our office, and those three full-time clerks work very hard for Jackson County. Last year, they recorded or processed over 28,000 recordings. In those recordings, we had the treasurer's forfeiture documents that we do e-recording of. That, they did over 4,100 of those. They um, served helped and served over 6,000 customers who took tickets from our kiosk machine on the second floor. And we have many customers who don't even take a ticket, like overnights, title companies who drop off the recordings, and the mail that comes in. I just wanted to say how proud I am of my staff. They work very hard for Jackson County, and I think they do a great job. Then we can come to the numbers. We didn't record a lot more in 2015 than we did 14, but when you look at um, the type of documents we did record, our deeds went up, which is fantastic, which means there's sales. County transfer tax went up quite a bit, which means those are good sales. Um, after... I don't think anything went down last year. We had a fairly good year, especially when we only increased recordings by like 300, so that says a lot. After our department expenses, we were able to send $766,000 into the general fund. We recorded one survey, 21, or 21 surveys, one Corner. We also recorded uh, 99, I wanted to make a correction, 99 remonumentation corners, which was up instead of the report saying down from 2014. Our copy totals, you see an increase. I think a lot of that has to do with now you can purchase off of our website, you can purchase using credit card cop copies using a credit card, which makes it a lot more convenient for customers. Don't even have to come into the office. They can purchase them right online. Um, everything is more or less self-explanatory on the report. Does anybody have any questions? Uh, Sheriff's deeds, you noticed, dropped again this in 2015 from 14. And... Uh, the last thing I note is I make a list and show for each township how many foreclosures they had in case any of you want to know if your totals for your districts. Commissioners, any questions for Mona? Appreciate the detailed report and the hard work and especially the bottom line numbers. Looks very good. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Mona. Next up we have the equalization report. Good morning. 
Uh, all I have for you today um, is the 2016 County Equalized Values Report. As you all know, it's required by law that you meet in equalization session in the month of April to certify the numbers um, that have come in from the local units. We did get uh, all of the units reporting last Wednesday. Every, everything was in. So we are compiling uh, numbers and we're working on the full equalization report for you that gives you all that other background information. Um, and that can either be brought to the uh, full board or if you'd like to um, have me come sometime in, in a study session and go over those numbers if you have you know in-depth questions. But for right now, um, the equalization report is uh, before you to forward onto the full board uh, for approval. Um, just to give you kind of an idea of where values are this year, uh, agricultural values are up 4.25%. Commercial values are up 2.71%. Industrial went down 0.74%. And residential values are up 6.06%. Overall, um, values were up 5.19% in the real property. However, this is the first year of the EMPP, the Eligible Manufacturing Personal Property Exemption. So uh, personal property was down 13.6% this year. And overall um, taxable value, which uh, will be reported to you in the full equalization report, uh, is down about 0.96%. Down 0.96 percent. Yep. Now some of that will be coming back through the reimbursement. Um, I don't know exactly what those, you know, figures will shake out to, but but that's where we're at. Are there any questions? Thanks, Ruth. Any commissioners with questions? Okay, we'd be looking for a motion to send the L4024 onto the full board. Motion and support. Questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same. Motion carried. Thank Thanks, you. Uh, next up, we're going to got stuck in the wrong place on the agenda, but we'll do the conservation district report. And I'm assuming Lori got the right one. Beautiful. It's item I on the agenda, commissioners. Uh, good morning. Uh, since uh, the f we were here in the fall of 2015, we've uh, been quite busy. Um, really quick, uh, I won't go through everything, but the, the fall tree sale this year, we had four customers. So we're kind of just doing it on, if people call me, I, I order them trees. I'm not, it's too small to be wasting that much time on. So uh, the 2016 sp spring tree sale is, this is tree sale week. So I'm cutting out right after I'm done here and I will be spending my entire week at the airport getting ready for that. Uh, the district's numbers for this year are, we had about 30 more customers than we did last year, uh, but the numbers are about the same. We're up about $750 um, from where we were last year at this time. Uh, we still have uh, the no-till grass grain drill and tree planter rentals. Right now we have the tree pl planter rented um, just one time so far this spring, and then the grass grain drill is rented uh, already to two different people. Uh, the MACD Fall Conference this year, um, I was uh, named the 2015 District Manager of the Year for the 79 conservation districts in Michigan, so thanks. <laughs> Just thought I'd throw that in there. Um, our annual meeting banquet, uh, Kenny Price and Greg Sanford were reelected to our board for four-year terms. Uh, we've done a couple uh, stints on the morning radio show um, with uh, Greg O'Connor for some outreach. Uh, as far as educational workshops and programs, we, uh, with Calhoun County Conservation District, we uh, ran the sprayer clinic this year. Uh, just over 100 uh, farmers were involved in that. We've done a few, um, we've done a water education, water quality education for uh, two local schools. Uh, we did a wetlands presentation at the great uh, annual meeting. And then Alita Daniels has also been doing some uh, recycling education uh, she's been invited to a couple different local businesses uh, like Certainteed and uh, Mackey and I think Dawn. She's been working with all of them on their uh, sustainability and recycling programs there. Uh, 
some volunteer events. We just had the fall adopt a stream and the winter stonefly hunt since last fall. Uh, we currently have three grants. Uh, the Conservation Technical Assistance Initiative grant uh, is continuing for another year. Uh, we have an engineer on staff for that position. We still have the Hunter Access Program, and then the MyCorps grant will actually end this June. And then Invasive Species Grant through the MDNR last year uh, fell through at the last minute because we lost a, uh, a match, um, some match from a local group. Uh, but now we're working with uh, Washtenaw County uh, to form a system for, uh, for this coming year's um, uh, grant opportunity. We also submitted a scrap tire grant through MDEQ. It was submitted in October of 2015. Um, we haven't heard a thing about it yet. Uh, there's something going on in Flint, I guess, that's kind of taken all their time. Uh, so we haven't heard anything about that. We've actually lost a couple townships that were supposed to work with us on this because they needed to schedule it, and um, we don't know yet, so they don't know if they can. So we, we're going to be, if we get it, we're going to be scrounging looking for places to have some uh, scrap tire collections. Um, our recycling coordinator and educator has been very busy. Uh, she published an informational brochure and is working on an annual recycling guide. It's like an eight or ten page uh, recycling guide. Pretty much if you have a question about where to recycle anything, it'll be listed in that recycling guide. Uh, we'll do a yearly one um, after that to keep everybody updated. Uh, she distributed a recycling survey at some community events and uh, on our for, on our website and our email address, or our email uh, list. Uh, we've got hundreds of surveys that have been returned, and she's keeping uh, a tally of all the results. Uh, and there was a recycling meeting with local groups, haulers, uh, DEQ, and concerned citizens to discuss those results, and uh, Jackson County Recycling, um, how, how they think we can improve it. Uh, we've also been planning Earth Day in the Park, which has a recycling theme. Uh, area schools have participated in the recycled, uh, recycled art contest. Uh, we had, uh, I think, Hanover Horton and maybe Northwest and one other school submitted entries to that, and those uh, dis will be displayed in local art galleries. We're working with Polly's Country Market to sell uh, the blue bags. Granger requires blue bags for the recycling program, which are very hard to find, so uh, we found some and we're selling them to Polly's Country Market to make those more available. And we're still working on a milk carton recycling grant uh, with Recycling Jackson. And we provided Jackson County Fair grand, Fairgrounds with three big recycling carts to collect recyclable materials at all their fair events. Um, our, our soil engineer um, right now is working on a fuel sediment and manure containment facility and is uh, working on a bunch of uh, Henrietta Township wetland restorations that were completed, and I think there's one more that'll be completed this spring. Some upcoming events, uh, like I said, this is spring tree sale week. The pickup dates are this Friday and Saturday. We have an Adopt a Highway sketch for April 17th. Project Red is April 19th. Uh, Earth Day is April 23rd. And the Arbor, Cele Arbor Day celebration at the Potter Park Zoo uh, is, I believe, April 29th. Or, yeah, April 29th. Uh, adopt a stream was moved to uh, May 2nd. Native plant sale, we're again working with the Men and Women's Garden Club, Master Gardeners, Dalem, Bex, a whole bunch of other people to do a community plant sale on May 21st. And then we're still going to have a presence at uh, Jackson County Fair, Learning Fair, Birds, Blooms, and Butterflies, and uh, Youth Jamboree this fall. So that's about it. Is there any questions? Lori, thanks for the great report and congratulations on the award. Thank you very much. Questions from commissioners? Hearing none, thank you. Thank you. Next up, we have the Department of Transportation with a number of issues. Topics, not issues. Good morning. We brought quite a team this morning because we have so many issues. Um, first couple of items involve engineering. So I have our uh, Director of Engineering, Angie Klein, and uh, Senior Civil Engineer, Joe Michalski, here. I'll just turn it over to Angie to describe a little bit about Category A, and then Joe can describe the project. Uh, go ahead, Angie. Thank you. Good morning. The first thing we have before you guys is a Category A Economic Enhancement Grant. 
development grant that um, we've been working with Lomar Machine and Tool to submit. Joe's been working a while now with uh, the uh, economic development grant um, people at MDOT and Lomar and worked out um, details on the application for that project. Uh, both us and uh, Lomar are putting match money in for that to make it a more sellable grant to the state. Um, Joe can describe the project for you guys really quick. Go ahead, Joe. Well, it all started uh, a number of months ago when uh, Amy Torres brought it to my attention at, at one of our Jacks meetings, and she says, well, Lomar's looking to build out there. Uh, their semis are leaving the driveways and they're driving across the road on this gravel road, and uh, is there any economic development money that we could apply for to uh, uh, pay for this project. So I said, sure, I'll let me look into that. And uh, lo and behold, uh, talking to Michigan Department of Transportation, they have some Category A money for just such an occasion. Um, they listed out the things that we needed to do. And uh, this is about the last piece is to get the resolution um, signed by the chair and, and uh, uploaded into their program. And it's going to widen the road to, to of course, a commercial and industrial cross-section so it's going to go from an 18-foot wide gravel to a 36-foot wide curb and gutter deep strength asphalt road. So uh, it's really going to look a lot different and it'll start at Moscow Road and go to the top of the hill. So uh, of course we had to do some survey and get a drawing done and, and uh, do an uh, engineer's estimate. Um, the construction estimate's roughly 200,000. Of course a lot of trees need to come down there um, and we will plant some new ones. Um, as part of the project uh, and some drainage and, and a number of issues like that. So um, uh, they, uh, they being Lomar, um, prepared some nice documents to MDOT to how many jobs they were going to retain and how many new jobs were going to be created for this. And so uh, um, MDOT was very uh, happy about that and it looks like um, we're almost to that finish line. So hopefully once we get the resolution set up, uh, their team meets and um, they can approve this project. Okay, commissioners, we're looking for a motion to send to the full board authorizing the chair to sign the resolution. I think the motion first and then support. <laughs> Questions or comments? Hearing none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same. Motion carried. Thank you. Nick? Our next item. Um, is an authorizing resolution for our local bridge program application. And uh, Angie happens to be an expert in this as, long as, as well as Joe. Um, both counties have had tremendous success in getting local bridge monies. Uh, Angie, would you like to describe the program? Sure. Before you, we have resolutions for three bridges to be submitted. It's for the local bridge funding. Um, each agency is allowed to submit five bridges every year. It's a very competitive program. Um, we, Jackson County, have been successful in submitting and getting 16 bridges since 2001. So Joe has done a great job at getting them. Um, we have, for this grant, it's a 5% match, so it's a, a great, great, great project if you can get the projects um, awarded. So 5% and then design and construction engineering would be out of the road department budget. Um, Joe, we are submitting three bridges this year, the Cornell Road Bridge, the Moon Lake Road Bridge, and the Trist Road Bridge. And we can answer any questions. I've got one technical question. If we submit all these at once, would they all either be approved or disproved, or could they pick and choose? Or They could all be approved. Um, it is very competitive. Last year, I had, in Calhoun County, we got two bridges out of the five we submitted. So. They, there's a scoring process, a committee, so they don't look at the agency specifically, they look at the bridge. I see. So it depends on they rank, where they rank out of all of the bridges submitted for the state. Okay. Commissioner, we'd be looking for a motion to send to the full board authorizing the chair to sign the resolution. So, support. Motion and support. Questions, comments? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed, the same? Thank motion you. Carried. Thank you. Uh, catch basin manhole repair or FQ. Yes, uh, we actually have three different bids in our FQs. So I have Jim Cooling, our contracts and purchasing manager, handy here to answer questions. 
Uh, Jim, do you want to give a quick overview? Uh, we're seeking approval here on the process for the first one, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, the first one we're seeking approval for is our catch basin repair RFQ. The reason we do an RFQ is too hard to do a bid because our catch basin repairs vary um, from all the work that we do. Plus, we have milling, pulverizing jobs. Those are specified as a different job. So what we do is RFQ. Uh, we'd like to apply or uh, award it to five leprechauns and track trenching and dirt works. Uh, what I would basically do is send out for quotes. Uh, whoever got the low quote with the specs that we supply them would get the award. This would be a one-year RFQ. So basically, this is our efforts to be a little more nimble and business-like and, and responsive so that we don't have to get bids all the time throughout, throughout the season. So we're just seeking approval to use these vendors. Okay, commissioners, any questions or comments? And we'd be looking for a motion to send it to the full board. Motion and support. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed the same. Motion carried. Thank you. Call for bid. Jim? Go ahead. Uh, we're seeking approval to award Jensen Bridge and Supply a one year bid on our culvert bid. Um, currently, we, we are not under contract. Uh, we are looking for approval up to $50,000. Uh, they are ordered on a case by case and maintenance as it comes up. Um, Jensen was the low bid. Uh, we did work with them in the past and we're very happy with them. Looking for a motion to send this to the full board. Motion and support. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed the same. Motion carried. Thank you. All right. Same thing, Jim. <laughs> We are seeking approval to award Wolverine seal coating, our overbanding bid. Just a small variance on overbanding. What that is is rubberized crack filling. Uh, we would come through, blow the cracks out just in the small cracked areas. It would be a rubberized uh, sealer that would be put down. Traffic get on it within one to two hours. Uh, this is a two-year bid. Um, we're seeking approval for $175,000 per year. Questions, commissioners? If not, a motion to send it to the full board's in order. Motion and support. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed the same. Motion carried. Thank you. Paver with a live bottom Falcon semi-trailer. Monthly report first? or uh, That's not how I have it on mine. Okay. We can do I've got the paver first and then the monthly report. Okay. All right, so on the personnel finance agenda today, we have a, a comprehensive capital plan amendment where we um, go through a comprehensive list of all of the equipment we're planning to purchase with the bonds. You might remember in November, we had a study session where we talked about our equipment needs. So here you see basically the first uh, um, effort to purchase equipment. Uh, in the last two months, we've talked about wedging our roads uh, here in Jackson County using our own in-house crews. And our team was uh, very ambitious and, and responsive in, in trying to track down. Um, we looked at new pavers, we looked at used pavers, and we got very fortunate here in finding uh, demo units for a paver and two live bottom uh, semi-trailers. We were initially going to lease the semi-trailers because that was what we had good luck doing in the past. However, uh, we found out that demand was high and the lease rates had uh, quadrupled, if not even more. And availability was slim pickings. So then we had to look towards purchasing because we knew we'd be using them given the volume of work we're seeing. Um, if you'd like, uh, I have uh, some of the folks here who visited the equipment and personally uh, checked it over. Would you like them to say a few words about what they saw? Sure. Mark and Jim, Terry. You might recall Mark is our fleet manager, and uh, Terry is Jim's assistant, as uh, assistant uh, purchasing contracts manager. Good morning. Uh, like uh, Christopher stated, uh, this is specially specialized equipment. It is tough to find in our market. Um, they don't produce a whole lot of it, and the demand is high for it. Um, so we did happen to uh, locate in. Uh, go over and inspect the equipment, uh, both uh, paver and live bottom trailers. So the live bottom trailers are uh, demo models. They're 2015s. 
Um, the pricing on them uh, new through my deal is 195,000. Um, we can get the demo models. Uh, one of them is 163.5. The other one's 185. Uh, so we beat the my deal price on uh, uh, the uh, the trailers, uh, and they're basically brand new units. They're uh, uh, one of them is is like new, and the other one's got about 20 hours on them. Um, the paver itself, uh, very difficult to find a, a quality used paver. Um, this particular paver happens to be a 2011 with uh, a little over 1,100 hours on it, which is excellent for us. Um, at a significant savings, um, a like new uh, comparable paver is uh, just under 400,000. Uh, this particular paver that we secured, uh, well, hopefully we can get it, is uh, a little over uh, 257,000. It does come with a two-year uh, powertrain and uh, major component warranty on it. Um. Questions from commissioners? Okay. Chris, I've only got uh, one comment or question, I guess, on the whole proposal, and that is that uh, the payment of all this equipment is based on us approving the bond proposal, correct? Correct. If for some reason you did not approve the bonds, though, we do have cash reserves that can cover this. Okay. And uh, the, once you do approve the bond resolution, which is coming forth in May, uh, you can go back 60 days. So we could, if we had bought anything else, we could go back even a little bit further and grab those in. So. Okay. Any questions from commissioners? Be looking for a motion to send this uh, full equipment purchase package onto the full board. Motion and support. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed the same. Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you. Monthly report. Thank you. Okay. Let me find my monthly report. There we go. All right. Uh, first off, just some general overviews on tree and brush trimming, um, pothole patching, and roadside deberming. Uh, deberming, of course, is one of the controversial things we do. Um, but it is necessary to um, basically scrape off the, the berms that build up on the edges of the roads. Uh, we're trying to get advance notice out, especially we had some incidents last year with sprinkler heads getting damaged and things like that. Technically, by law, we, we don't have to give notice, and we have full rights to that, but we definitely want to be more uh, customer service oriented with those efforts. So I don't know, Bob, if you want to say anything more about those first three items feel free um, no basically that's just uh, our normal maintenance that we're trying to do uh, we've got to get as much of the tree trimming done before the middle of April before the oak wilt shuts us down um, but other than that it's just uh, the routine maintenance that we're doing we keep going there about one or four or five six. You okay Chris, Chris I've got a question sure. uh, chair does too so you, you mentioned the spring okay. sprinkler heads uh, with deberming Clearly, those would be in county right of way that somebody has placed the sprinkler heads because you're talking, what, three feet or so off the edge of the paved surface? Yes. No. Okay. Yeah. Chairman, shall we? You've mentioned uh, three or four different occasions about oak wilt. Do we have a formal policy on oak wilt control or on how we're stopping and starting, you know, first frost, last frost? type deal on the control. I keep getting questions from the state of Michigan about what Jackson Calhoun is doing about Oakwell and how they're handling it and the emails are getting ignored by JDOT. Um, they've sent you a half dozen emails on it just to find out even if we have a verbal policy. Um, is there a way I could get a copy of any of that or is it just come and go? I guess I haven't seen any emails, me personally, here lately, um, but we do have a, a more of a verbal policy. We don't have a written policy on it that uh, mid-April through uh, mid-July that during the oak wilt vulnerability yeah. times that we uh, not trim oaks, and if we do, we have a sealant that we can seal the wound with um, to help keep that from spreading. I do have that uh, information. Um, 
and we were basically trying to formulate a best management practice on that very issue uh, in Calhoun we've kind of taken the lead on that particular issue so our project manager there he's been out of the office recently but we, we do plan to formulate a response Could you sure no? absolutely Absolutely. The reason why I bring it up is the conservation district has asked me to assist them in an ad hoc committee on invasive species. Because as you know, they did not receive their designation nor their grant monies to control invasives. And it was part of the issue was that we couldn't get responses from the organizations who would be front line in impacting that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, Jackson, Washtenaw, and two other counties are the only four counties in the state of Michigan that do not have a department designation from DEQ for invasive control and part of it is that we just don't have the information from the agencies our local agencies okay it's good to know we do need to get that figured out definitely where were we Bob state trunk line I believe it's for state trunk lines go ahead yeah. um, basically our state Crews have been working on uh, their normal stuff, preventative maintenance, uh, working on their trucks, uh, doing the routine patrol patching, uh, everything from drains to brush. MDOT has started uh, doing some brush control, brush mowing on 94 um, and M50 with their own uh, contractors. Um, that's what about it for state. Uh, the crack sealing, uh, as you heard earlier, we're, we're uh, we got the bid to go we're going through for the crack seal um, for overbanding. It'll start on the 25th. Um, and that'll basically be uh, going along with our dirt patch crews to, to take care of our project roads and uh, primary roads. I'm real happy to see that we're getting out of the gate early. The best time to crack seal is when the temperatures are still moderately cool because the uh, cracks are open. When we get into the warm weather, the cracks uh, kind of tighten up and it's probably not the best time to crack seal at that point in time, so this is good. We are collaborating with the Parks Department on uh, several high priority projects with them, so that's a, um, a nice thing for us to, uh, to be working. We have that list if you're interested on, of those projects. Um, item seven, we have received a three of the four glider kits. Bob, we're expecting the last one here soon. Uh, probably two to three weeks, we should have the, the fourth and final glider kit that we had uh, purchased. These That's are a picture of, I guess, if you guys have the the, uh, the report. Report. You got a picture of that one. Moving the snow is actually one of the glider kits. Yep. And then we show a, ch a picture of one of the uh, new chassis that were ordered uh, back in uh, November. Um, they arrive raw in that condition, and then they get uh, kind of inspected uh, for approval for payment, and then we send them off to the bodybuilder. We're still expecting those in December, correct? Yes. Okay. And then uh, here, this last paragraph, Bob, we highlighted that we had three to five trucks down per storm event here recently. And we held our own, basically. I don't know if you want to say more about that. We made it through. That's actually pretty good for our fleet. Um, our, our fleet manager that was just up here talking about them, about the equipment, and our mechanics have done an excellent job of keeping the fleet going this year. Um, two to three to five trucks per storm really isn't too bad when you look at the grand scheme of things. Um, I think currently we've got around six units that are down right now, two of them waiting on parts um, just to, to get them back on the road. But we're still set pretty good with our fleet right now. Carl, I think you snapped the picture that I've included <laughs> here of one of our mechanics uh, laying on his back uh, working yes. on this truck. Who, who was that mechanic? Tom Klein. Tom Klein. So just an example of the dedication and the messy work environment that, that uh, some sometimes our, our dedicated employees are faced with as they try to keep our fleet up and running. Paving operations are scheduled to start May 2nd, uh, and that's both our crews, as long as we're able to purchase this paver, and, and w as well as our contractors. Is that correct, Jim? So we're getting out of the gate as soon as possible. Basically, production starts just then, correct, yes. at the hot mix asphalt plants. I'd like to introduce a couple of new people that we have with us this morning. Um, First up is uh, Dawn Goodwine. Dawn, if you'd stand. Uh, Dawn uh, began her post just this last week, so she's been on board uh, all of a week. She replaces a retirement that we had. Marilyn Kilpatrick has served us for many years as our office manager, so we recrafted the job description. 
Um, Don has an associate's degree in accounting and computer science and achieved a certification as a human resource generalist. And she's got 20, over 20 years of experience in HR, accounting, and uh, uh, she's basically provided high-level support for organizations she's worked for. Um, she is a dash line report to our HR department, working with Richard and, and the department there. Uh, so that's an example of our closer integration with the, the county administration. So it's a huge step forward for us. Don, you want to say a couple words? Good morning. Um, like you said, I just started Monday, so most of my experience is in the manufacturing facility. So this is a new challenge for me, and I'm very excited for the new challenge and glad to be here. Thanks. Next up is our new project and stakeholder communications manager. Ann Cox uh, accepted her position a couple, three weeks ago here, and uh, she began today. So uh, she had a tour this morning, and we whisked her away to come here to, to meet all of you and to get a sense of our culture here and how we handle our committee meetings and so forth. Um, she's worked as, a, as the program coordinator for the Carl A. Gerstacker Institute for Business Management at Albion College. Did I say that right? That's correct. Okay, great. Um, you have a bachelor's in interpersonal and public communications from Central Michigan University, and you're also a certified paralegal. Um, and you basically had outstanding writing and presentation skills. We had a pretty rigorous interview process and, and did a fantastic job with her presentation to our group. You want to say a couple words, Anne? I'd like to say good morning to everyone, first of all, and thank you for the opportunity of letting me work for the county. And um, I'm looking forward to contributing, and uh, I'll see where my day and my week takes me, and hope to be back next month for the meeting too, right? Yes. Okay, thank, thank you. you. This next one Photoshop, Chris, sir? Uh, almost, yeah. It kind of looks like we paper dolled Bob in there. I want to back up just real quick and address uh, a couple things. Um, the Oak Wilt issue that was brought up here this morning, as well as the deberming that I mentioned, part of Ann's role is going to be helping us with that outreach effort and, and communicating with the public and responding more timely with many of these requests. We frankly get flooded with, with tons of emails, and, and Bob and I try to delegate them and handle them, but frankly, uh, they get back burnered, unfortunately. So we, we definitely have a drive to be a lot more responsive, and, and this is part of that, that program. So Ann will be a high-level individual working closely with me and our senior management team to make that happen. So our interview process and, and uh, success in recruiting uh, is still underway, and I credit, uh, you know, uh, Ann and Dawn taking the positions. We have another position starting at the end of the month with, as our senior accountant. So Bob wore a suit and I was incredibly impressed and so I have to razz him a little bit and show you all just uh, how, uh, how sharp he was dressed. This was actually our second interview, is correct, Dawn? Mm -hmm. That's uh, where you had to present, if I recall. All right. Um, I think that's the conclusion of my monthly report. Chris, there was another page here with engineering project highlights and okay. updates. Uh, Thank you. Yep, I see that now. I'll have Angie come back up and hit those. Thank you. Hello again. Engineering, we've been very busy. Besides the items we had on the agenda earlier, um, we have our projects for this year. The Robinson Road project uh, is officially in the May 6th letting. Um, Fifth Avenue, I attended the or Fifth Street, sorry. I attended the DDA meeting last week with Commissioner Rice. Um, that project is set to go finally, and we have a, a tentative April 18th start date. That's all weather permitting, um, mobilization, everything has to occur, but that's what we've been told by the contractor is an April 18th start date. Our federal aid projects through the task force have been submitted and are set for a June letting. That's two projects, but in one contract, so it's really all one contract. Um, that's Deering Road, Mount Hope, and Clear Lake. And then the other project that we have is the Human Services Building parking lot that has been approved. Um, that is out to bid right now. We have a pre-bid meeting this week for that, and we anticipate a, a bid opening on April 20th of this month with a start date in May. And unless you guys have any questions. Commissioners, any questions for... Okay, done. Hearing none, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you very much. I uh, just want to say we have so much going on, it's sometimes hard to pare it down to a, a brief report for you all. So I hope it's not too much, but we just want to keep you informed of what we're doing. Thanks. Appreciate the detail. Thanks. Okay, 
hey, the claims have just made their way around, we'd be looking for a motion on those. Motion and support. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed the same. Motion carried. Uh, no other minutes. The May reporting schedule looks like we have nothing going on in May. I'll bet there is, though. Uh, it takes us back to public comments again. Public, you have three minutes for comments. Hearing none, committee member comments. Hearing no comments, we're adjourned. <laughs>